In the ancient Jewish temple, a large veil blocked access to the Holy of Holies, where the presence of God dwelled. It was a constant reminder that sin separated us from God. Nobody was allowed in except for the high priest, and then only once a year. On the Day of Atonement, the high priest would pass through the veil to offer a sacrifice for the sins of Israel. This continued for generations, because the sacrifice could never be good enough. Fortunately, it was just a foreshadowing of what was to come. Two thousand years ago, something changed. A new sacrifice was offered. A perfect sacrifice. One final sacrifice for all of time. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. He paid the ultimate price so that the sins of all men could be forgiven. At the moment of his death, the large veil in the temple, the very thing that represented centuries of separation from God, was torn. Torn in two from the top down showing that this era of separation was over. With his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves, he entered the Holy of Holies once and for all time and secured our redemption forever. We read in the book of Exodus that um, the temple had a veil, was to have a veil, a cloth curtain, uh, separating the most holy place, the Holy of Holies, uh, from the, the rest of the holy place. There are sections within the temple building itself that are more holy than others, where access is restricted more than other places. And the most holy place where only the high priest can go once a year uh, is separated from the rest by this curtain. This, I would imagine it would be fairly substantial uh, in order to, to give the sanctity and the aura of holiness behind it. In the temple, the priest would offer sacrifices in the holy place. But once a year, he would bring a sacrifice beyond a, a thick veil uh, a curtain, and that would go into the Holy of Holies, and there he would offer the Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement sacrifice. And that sacrifice, which is almost, in my opinion, when we get a credit card, it's like paying the minimum uh, and not really dealing with the debt, but paying the minimum and paying the minimum. And when the Messiah came and when he died, his sacrifice, though outside the gate of the city, actually is the final sacrifice for sin. It is the one that all these interim Yom Kippur sacrifices were leading up to. They were pointing to this one that was coming. And now this one, not the blood of bulls and goats, but the blood of God's Son, the Messiah himself, as he dies, that veil, that thick veil is torn in half to say that no other sacrifices need be offered here. The final payment has come. It's been taken care of. And so the, the tearing of the veil indicates the permanence, the, the final sacrifice of the Messiah, Jesus. In the Old Testament, God chose to dwell among his people in the temple. And if a holy God is going to dwell amongst unholy people, there has to be some way to protect his holiness from the unholiness of Israel. So he had this elaborate scheme of who could enter his presence behind a veil. No one could go past here. Only the most sacred of priests who had fully cleansed themselves once a year would go into the Holy of Holies. So in a sense, the people knew he was there but had no accessibility to him. God, I believe, when he ripped that veil, I can just imagine those almighty hands whoom, ripping that veil. What he did is he said, come on in. You're welcome. You don't have to stay out there anymore. You can come in and you don't have to be perfect 
to come into my holy place because Jesus has made a way for you. I love the word access in the Bible. Uh, maybe it's because I'm in a wheelchair, I don't know, but I, I love when the Bible speaks about God's love being accessible. And right there, you've got such a vivid physical symbol of the access, the doors thrown open wide to the throne of God. And when it rips in two uh, by itself uh, at the death of Jesus, not only is it saying something theologically about open access to God, uh, but it's something that, that had a very dramatic, must have had a very dramatic impact on everybody who was watching and those whom they told about it. Um, a event that really overturns, that, that, that makes us think again about why it was there. Uh, and that both destroys and opens new opportunities at the same time. Español, inglés, Deutsch. Normalmente produzco solo videos en inglés y español. Normally I produce only videos in English and Spanish. Normalerweise produciré ich nur videos en English and Spanish. Pero hoy voy a hacer otra excepción y traducirlo también en alemán. But today I make another exception and translate it into German too. Aber heute werde ich nochmal eine Ausnahme machen und es auch in Deutsch übersetzen. Ja, algunas semanas tengo escrito en mi lista de tareas por hacer de traducir el video hashtag BTC4. Now, already some weeks ago, I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich uh, auf meiner to-do list geschrieben, um, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. Estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I'm sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten uh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin and give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und Motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento, el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment, the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im Moment ist der Preis von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma 
el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my for the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanus Enigma explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanus Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich in folgendem. folgendem. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in Papier ausdrucken, um, minimum 10 or besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero, and the next time uh, you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. O tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante. O maybe a tip in a restaurant. O la trinkgeld en restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin. De direcciones de Bitcoin. When you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die, uh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, um, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015, escribir la fecha más plus cuatro años, eh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, 
auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin eh, en estos cuatro años, yo lo vuelvo a tener. Tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in, this, um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, schau, das ist der private Schlüssel. Um, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Schlüssel. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way, you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. In mi video antigo. English, Espanol. Video mix number 25, video mix numero 25. This time I want to talk especially about hashtag JCCVW, which I created some time ago, abbreviation for Justice Court Comedy and Virtual Worlds. Esta vez quiero hablar especialmente sobre el tema hashtag JCCVW, que el hashtag que he creado hace algún tiempo, so, que, eh, y es la abreviación por eh, justicia, Justice Court Comedy in Virtual Worlds, eh, justicia, comedia de justicia en mundos virtuales. I made already several videos about this hashtag. Uh, ya he hecho varios videos sobre este hashtag. But this time, especially thinking of my last video, number 24, uh, Robot Ethics. Pero esta vez, especialmente pensando en mi último video, eh, video mix número 24, Robot Ethics, e Ética de Robots. First, I want to mention uh, the episode of Simpsons, Treehouse of Horror, number 13. Primero quiero men mencionar el, el episodio. El episodio de Simpsons número 13, Treehouse of Horror, número 13. Just a side note, it's uh, astonishing uh, now many years in Spanish TV uh, and at lunchtime and in the evening they are still showing about half an hour or more. Uh, Simpsons, many years now. Es asombroso. Um, ya muchos años que por el mediodía y también por la, por la noche enseñan por lo menos media hora de los Simpsons en la televisión española. Did you hear of the term Simpsonology? 
has oído de, del término simpsonología o simpson simpson simpsonology simpson simpsonology maybe i'll check out if it in spanish simpsonología todavía no. long story short the moral of the this episode of the simpsons the animals have more ethics than humans Resumiendo este episodio de los Simpsons, uh, los animales tienen más ética que los humanos. Remember my last video, number, video mix number 24, Robot Ethics, Cat Ethics. Recuerda mi uh, último video mix número 24, Robot Ethics, Ética de Robots and Cat Ethics, Ética de Gatos. And with a funny GIF, GIF is abbreviation for Graphic Interchange Format. Y con un gracioso GIF, GIF. Maybe it's a little bit helpful to compare robot ethics and cat ethics. Tal vez uh, ayuda a comparar un poco el ética de robots y ética de gatos. Once I said to my mom, uh, talking with this person is like uh, teaching, teaching ethics to cats. Una vez he dicho a mi madre, mira, hablando con esa persona es como eh, enseñar ética a, a gatos. They just do what they want. Solo sim simplemente hacen lo que quieren. And the robots do what they are programmed to do. Y los robots hacen simplemente lo que están programados de hacer. The question is the responsibility. La cuestión es la responsabilidad. So in the end, you see, it's almost not controllable. Así que verás que al final no es controlable. But normal cats can never turn as evil as humans. Pero gatos normales nunca pueden volverse tan eh, malos, hacer cosas tan malas como los humanos. Perversion, perversión, opposite land, el país de justo todo al revés. Copyright, copy prohibition. Copyright es más bien no un derecho de copiar, sino una prohibición de copia, copiar. Law of intellectual property. La ley de la propiedad intelectual. Especially because I like to produce video mix. I got very angry about the legal system and the perverse law of intellectual property which inhibits innovation and freedom of expression. Especialmente porque me gusta producir video mix, me enfadé con el sistema legal en especialmente el especialmente la ley de la propiedad intelectual que inhibe la innovación y la libertad de expresión. And if you continue to think about the legal system, uh, you get more and more doubts. Y si continúas de pensar sobre el sistema legal, vas a tener más y más dudas. 
but still you have I think it's important to have a place and to talk about ethics pero igualmente pienso que es importante de tener un lugar donde se hable sobre ética that's the main motivation why I created hashtag JCC VW, Justice Card Comedy and Virtual Worlds. Es la motivación principal por la que he creado el hashtag JCC VW, Justice Card Comedy and Virtual Worlds. Justicia, comedia de justicia en mundos virtuales. Even on my main Twitter account, Manos Enigma, the cover picture. Uh, I've got written justice. Who has the right to judge? Who is without sin? Cast the first stone. Hasta en mi cuenta de Twitter principal, Manos Enigma, tengo um, a cover, um, la imagen de cover, escrito justicia. ¿Quién tiene el derecho de juzgar? ¿Quién está sin pecado que tire la primera piedra? And it's astonishing how often the Simpsons show some kind of court comedies. Y es asombroso. ¿Cuántas veces en los Simpsons enseñan algún tipo de comedias de juicios? I want to remember especially the lawsuit or court comedy of Homer Simpson when he sold his soul to the devil, Ned Flanders. Especialmente quiero recordar el juicio de Homer Simpson cuando vendió su alma al diablo, uh, Ned Flanders. In normal legal system, the question is always, is it legal or is it illegal? En el sistema legal, uh, normalmente la cuestión pregunta es, ¿es legal o es ilegal? But it's more important to ask, is it, is it ethical, is it right or is it wrong? Es más importante preguntar, es, ¿está bien o mal? ¿Es ético o no, no es ético? Did you hear of the term jury nullification? Has oído de este término, ahora no sé en español, pero eh, uno tiene el derecho de decir que, por ejemplo, no culpable porque la ley es injusta. You have the right to say it's uh, not guilty because the law is not just unjust. I want to remember especially the case of Ross Albrecht, Free Ross, hashtag Free Ross, Dread Pirate, Silk Road. Especialmente quiero recordar el juicio de Ross Albrecht, um, Silk Road, Bitcoin, and my profile picture of Innocent Crypto Kitty y mi imagen de perfil Innocent Crypto Kitty que quiere decir el, el gatito inocente de criptografía But it's medical catnip Pero es catnip médico 30 years of jail for running a website which other people used for buying and selling catnip. 30 años de cárcel por hacer una página web que otras personas han usado 
para comprar y vender catnip. And I want to remember what said Roger Bear, uh, Bitcoin Jesus. He said something like, uh, the war against drugs cause more harm than the drugs themselves. Y quiero recordar lo que dijo Roger Ware, que es como el Bitcoin, el Jesús de Bitcoin, dijo algo como que la guerra contra las drogas causan más daño que las drogas mismas. Okay, let's go back to even if you would have want to have a person like ah and not just Roger Ware uh, the case of Charlie Shrin, another Bitcoiner, a very interesting case too, and one interview um, I made a video um, very interesting comment of Andreas Antonopoulos in one episode of Let's Talk Bitcoin. I think it's the video mix number. Yes, I had just a look. It's video mix number 17. Posto e mirado es el video mix numero 17 con Charlie Shrem. This comment I like too much, so why I paste it here. Este comentario me gusta demasiado, así que uh, algunos minutos voy a pegar en este momento. Podcast can agree to the fact that whatever we have in this country that passes for a justice system has at least three tiers. There are, you know, people at the top who get infinite, infinite forgiveness for some of the most disgusting mega crimes and never face the tiniest consequence for their actions. You can put a million people out of their homes with fraudulent foreclosures, you'll never see the inside of a courtroom. You can rig markets, steal money from investors, defraud millions of people. You'll never see the inside of a courtroom. And yet there's the other side of the scale where you have a situation of zero tolerance, where the slightest infraction selling a loose cigarette for 30 cents gets you a street side arrest judgment and execution by strangulation where jaywalking gets you shot by a cop even if you're unarmed and where cities run effectively debtors prisons where they rotate people through there for traffic fines and keep accumulating them until they end up in jail for violating subpoenas and things like that and run it as a for-profit enterprise. And then in the middle is the middle class caught in this justice system, this thin layer that's getting thinner all the time because they're getting squeezed from the bottom. And the middle class sees the top of this country getting away with uh, mega crimes and sees a wave of zero tolerance coming at them that used to only affect minorities, but now is increasingly taking bites out of the middle class. And they're struggling desperately not to fall into this Orwellian zero tolerance justice system. That's not justice. I think everyone on this call probably has a similar perspective to this, but effectively what we're talking about is an erosion of the rule of law. And the most fundamental concept of the rule of law is equality in judgment. If a law exists, there is one tier. Everybody faces the same consequences for breaking that law. And that fundamental social compact has been violated. And for some stratum of the society, it never really existed. You know, some people were always going to feel the heavy boot of law um, with no recourse and um, suffered under that for 200 years. Uh, but now that is 
increasingly becoming the vast majority of the population. So you live in a society where the slightest mistake is very harshly punished. That's if you survive the police encounter. Um, while you watch a country's so-called elite just roll from scandal to scandal, from crime to crime, with no one going to jail. War crimes, no jail time. Bank fraud, no jail time. All of these things, you know, surveillance and violating the constitutional rights of millions of people, not even a misdemeanor issue. It just gets legalized after the fact. Lying to Congress, no problem. And then Preet can promote his resume by going after Charlie. It's really a disgusting situation, but I think it's, it's a situation that has nothing to do with Bitcoin per se. It's just a universal collapse of justice and the rule of law in this country. One of the few countries that actually had it. As that was so well said, I have no response to it. I, I completely agree with Andreas, everything he just said. It's, it's, it's not limited to, to Bitcoin. It's, a, it's an overall, you see it, you see it with everything. I mean, look at the case of Aaron Schwartz. May he rest in peace. But once they have their sights on you, telling it's you per se, I think it's what you represent or who you are. Um, there's no getting out of those sites. And the higher up you are, the harder it is for them to prosecute you. It just doesn't make sense for them. Our justice system has been corrupted or skewed to, to, to what it is today. And I created the hashtag Let's Talk Justice, or maybe a better hashtag Let's Talk Ethics. Y también he creado ese hashtag Vamos a hablar sobre justicia, Let's Talk Justice, pero tal vez mejor Let's Talk Ethics. Vamos a hablar sobre ética. After this part of video mix number 17, I will paste a short video comparison of the two uh, websites of Wikipedia about this episode of Simpson Treehouse of Horror number 13. Y después de esa parte del video mix número 17 voy a pegar un pequeño video en una comparación entre las dos páginas de Wikipedia en inglés, en español. I forgot to say in English, in comparison between English and Spanish of the episode of the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, no, eh, perdón, español ahora, eh, comparación del episodio de Simpsons Treehouse of Horror número 13. Comparing hashtag JCCVW to uh, the real legal system, of course, there is no such thing like judgment, rather a fiction punishment. Comparando JCCVW, uh, comparándolo con el sistema legal, uh, por supuesto no hay tal cosa como un, una sentencia de juicio más bien un, un castigo ficticio. Just want to remember you, I have that uh, Twitter account Soul Trade Game in virtual worlds like Second Life with, with Virtual Guide Dog. 
a recordar que tengo la cuenta en Twitter que se llama Soul Trade Game, traducido Juego de Negocios de Almas. Es como un juego en mundos virtuales como Second Life. Especially interesting for cats and blind people. Especialmente interesante para gatos y personas que estén ciegos o tengan problemas con los ojos o people blind o people who have problems with the eyes. The bra anyway, watch my videos about Soul Trade Game. De toda forma, mirad mis videos sobre Soul Trade Game, juego ne de negocio de almas. And I have that Twitter account, Soul, uh, sorry, Soul Confiscator Catch. Y tengo este, esta cuenta de Twitter, Soul Confiscator Cat. You are welcome on all of my Twitter accounts. Normally I follow back. Estáis bienvenidos en todas mis cuentas de Twitter. Normalmente sigo de vuelta. So you see I have a double or triple interest to open hashtag GCCVW. Así que veis que tengo un doble o triple interés de abrir el hashtag JCCVW. Justice God comedy in virtual worlds. Uh, what I wanted to say before about the jury nullification. Uh, if you really would like to to um, participate in a trial lawsuit uh, to help uh, somebody from getting declared guilty fast, you have to take vacation, you have to buy a flight to New York. And I think this trial was in January of um, Free Ross, Ross Albrecht, um, Silk Road. So, bueno, lo que iba a decir antes uh, con respecto al derecho de Renalification uh, en español no me acuerdo, o sea, no estoy segura, pero que tienes el derecho de decir que mira, yo estoy, uh, no estoy de acuerdo que esta persona sea declarada culpable. Oh, así que primero tendrías que tomar vacaciones, comprar un vuelo a Nueva York y eh, era ese juicio me parece era en, en enero cuando hizo un montón de frío. So comparing this legal system with uh, hashtag JCCVW, this is in, in, in virtual worlds. Everybody can participate and talk about ethics, right or wrong don't need to buy a flight to New York, uh, comparando ahí con el sistema legal. No, eso tiene que, tiene lugar en mundos virtuales, no hay que comprar un vuelo a Nueva York y tanto, tanto esfuerzo para participar en un juicio, discutir sobre ética. Puedes fácilmente participar de cualquier lugar, ordenador, P2P, and especially talking about robot ethics, this will be very important in the future. Y especialmente el tema de ética de robots en el futuro será muy importante. Because it's easy to say uh, the person who programmed the robot is responsible for the actions, but uh, it's very easy to uh, to hide the identity who programmed the robot. Es muy fácil decir que la persona que ha 
programado el robot es responsable por las acciones del robot pero es muy fácil de ocultar la identidad de la persona que ha programado el robot so now i'll paste the, these two videos así que ahora voy a pegar estos dos videos